good afternoon, friends. I would like to thank you for joining us for this first ever virtual flower service at the Black Marsh Road Cemetery in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador. In these days, as we navigate our way through the restrictions in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, we are unable to gather in this place for our annual service as we normally would. So here we are connecting with you over virtual means. And while the format of the service will look a, diff look a little different today than it has in previous years, it is our hope that you will find comfort as we commemorate and pay tribute to our loved ones who have gone on to be with the Lord. May you experience the peace, love, and grace of God in these moments as we worship together. As has been the tradition at our annual flower services, we feel it's important to read out the names of those who've been laid to rest here in this sacred place. These are your loved ones, and we recognize that as we read these names, a sense of loss for many of you is still very real. Please be assured of our thoughts and prayers during these moments, and may this be a time and a means of comfort to you and an act that might even bring closure to those who need that today. Let's be in prayer for the families of these loved ones as we hear the names of those who've gone on to the home prepared for them in glory. Gladys Lillian Bell Weaver, February 2017. Israel Smith, 
February 2019. Albert King, August 2019. James Cornelis, August 2019. Maisie Froud, August 2019. Richard Hillier, September 2019. Alexander Roy Rideout, September 2019. Sylvia O'Connell, September 2019. Helen Harbin, September 2019. Gerald Tilly, October 2019. Doris Downey, October 2019. Louise Blunden, October 2019. Thomas King, October 2019. Henry Thomas Earl, November 2019. Alfonso Octavius, November 2019. Emma Snow, December 2019. Jean Whalen, December 2019. Delphine Woodland, December 2019. Molly Ivy Cornick, January 2020. Juanita Reed, January 2020. James Kirby, January 2020. Ruby Stead, January 2020. Milton Osmond, January 2020. Willis Clark, January 2020. Cheryl Andrews, February 2020. Saritha French, February 2020. Grant Barnes, March 2020. Major Leah Snook, March 2020. Lindsay Talk, March 2020. Major Georgie Thorne, April 2020. Charlie Sturge, April 2020. Mary Clark, April 2020. Margaret Moores, April 2020. Gordon Cousins, April 2020. Dorothy White, April 2020. Edna Mitchell, April 2020. Ada Efford, April 2020. Baxter P. Brown, April 2020. Major Hilda Harvey, May 2020. Mabel Parsons, June 2020. Herbert Parsons, October 2014. Emma Brown, July 2020. Audrey Lindstorm, July 2020. Let's share in prayer together. Heavenly Father, it's with heavy hearts that we think upon and remember our loved ones that have gone on to be with you. While the loss is indeed great, there is comfort in knowing that today they rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Lord, while we are unable to physically gather as a large group where our loved ones have been laid to rest today, our hearts are there. And Lord, I ask your peace would be experienced by those who mourn today. And that the warm embrace of your comfort and your love would be experienced by all who gather in this way. Lord, bless us as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
afternoon everyone. Coming to you from our Black Marsh Road Cemetery and sharing with you in this uh, special uh, flower service today. And I want to begin by reading to you some scriptures from John chapter 14. There we read these words from Jesus. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. How many times have you received an offer that sounded just too good to be true? The phone rings, you hear the sound of the ship's horn. You've been chosen for a Caribbean cruise. Press this number to claim your prize. Too good to be true. Maybe you've received some emails like I have from the Nigerian prince needing to leave the country and move his millions of dollars to a safe place. Looking to me or you for support uh, will be paid well, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. Sounds too good to be true. I recently received an email from Canada Revenue Agency telling me that I was due a refund of $500. And when I looked at the email address, I knew something wasn't correct with it. And I realized that uh, this wasn't true. It really was too good to be true. John 14 is a similar passage that declares some ideas that may seem too good to be true. As Jesus shares with us some of the thoughts that I just read to you a moment ago. These verses tell us the truth about a place, a promise, and a person. Let me begin first by telling you the truth that Jesus shares with us about a place. In the King James Version, which many of us are familiar with, it reads, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Now in this verse, Jesus is taking us beyond the realm of earthly time and space and speaking about an eternal home in heaven. It's a place that John describes, actually, in Revelation 21, verses 1 to 4. John writes, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look! God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the older order of things has passed away. Too good to be true? Most of you are aware that uh, the lower end of Springdale Street here in St. John's has quite a rich history of the Salvation Army. It's there over many years that we've had the old number one corps, St. John's Temple Corps today. Uh, the old training college was located there, the Harbor Light, and much more. When those buildings were damaged and demolished a few years ago, there were many who saw this as the end of the Army's work in that area. While some had a great vision of what could be, others saw the possibility of, couldn't see the possibility, rather, of anything great in that place again. Some would have said the idea of a new facility on that lot, it, well, it's just too good to be true. Yet today we have a beautiful place, the Chesapeake Center of Hope, nearing completion and soon to be ready for occupancy. The demolition of the old buildings did not mark the end of our life in that area, rather the beginning of a new reality in a new place. This is but a weak illustration, I realize that, because it's still a temporal illustration. But it does speak to continual new life beyond that which came to an end. In 1 Corinthians 5 and 1, Paul says, 
For we know that if the earthly tent, which our house, it, which is our house, is torn down, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. That's the truth Jesus spoke about, a place of eternal life. Now, another word from Jesus that sounds too good to be true is really the truth about a promise, his promise. And it's a promise that is for you and is for me. And it's this promise. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. To know there is a place is one thing. To know this place is for me personally is another. That is the promise of Jesus. At some point when this earthly life of ours is over, we have the promise of God that this eternal, unimaginable, indescribable place is for me personally. Some of you may recall the song from the 70s that was very popular during those days, and it actually reached the top of the charts around the world. Tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. It's a song that uh, speaks to the testimony, really, or the witness of a man who was just released from jail, had served his time, and wasn't sure about whether he'd be accepted when he went home. So he wrote to the love of his life, and he said to her, when I come by on that bus, you tie a yellow ribbon around the oak tree, if you are willing to have me return. However, if there's no ribbon around the tree, I will fully understand, will stay on the bus, and will keep going. And as this gentleman on the bus approached the house where the tree was, a little nervous about it, wasn't sure what the response would be, he said to the bus driver, you take a look and tell me if there's a yellow ribbon tied around the tree. As they approached the house and the tree, the bus driver shared with him and he saw for himself that there wasn't one yellow ribbon tied around the tree, in fact, there were a hundred yellow ribbons tied around that tree, indicating that there was a welcome available for him and they were longing to see him come home. The yellow ribbon was this man's sign and promise that he was accepted and had a place to go. For the Christian, our symbol is not a yellow ribbon, it's a cross, the cross of Calvary. You see behind me, there's a beautiful cross. Well, that's our symbol. And it's from this cross that we receive the word that takes us to the next portion of scripture here, the next words of Jesus, which is really a story that sounds too good to be true, but it's the truth about a person. And that person is Jesus. Jesus shares with us a message about a place, heaven, a message about a promise, home, and now a message about a person himself. Jesus said in verse 6, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now that's quite a statement to make about oneself. There is no other way to God but through Jesus. The Christian church has been criticized through the years because of our exclusive claims about Jesus being the only way to God. However, this is not a claim of Christianity. This is a claim of Jesus himself. Some commentators believe that when Jesus spoke of going to prepare a place for you, while it would make obvious sense that he was referring to the place called heaven, Jesus also had his eye on Calvary, which lay before him. Jesus was kind of saying this, I am going to Calvary. There I will take on the sin of the whole world. There I will die for that sin. There I will open the door to heaven and eternal life for all who accept this gift I offer. Sound too good to be true? It is true. It is truth. In fact, in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, where we're told again about that truth, where it says, for you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. If this all sounds too good to be true, don't be deceived, it is true. Jesus said it. There is a place of eternal life. A graveyard like this does not need to be our ending. There is a promise for you and for me. 
a promise that our loved ones who lie here in this place today, they believed in this promise. It's a promise that is now reality for many of them. And there is a person behind all of this. Jesus is the one who provides the place and the promise. Like our loved ones whom we honor here today in this place, we can claim him, take him at his promise, and we too can have a place in heaven when this earthly life ends, and we can be certain that it will. Thank you for sharing with us today. God bless you. As we conclude our service today, we do hope that this has been a meaningful time for you and that the Lord has indeed spoken peace to your hearts today. I also want to take this opportunity to thank those who participated. Thank you to Don Butt for providing the vocal selections, to Lieutenant Colonel Eddie Vincent providing the message from God's Word, to the St. John's Temple Band for bringing us the band selection, and to Rob Lee for uh, piecing all of uh, this video together for us today. And I certainly want to thank anybody who has uh, helped in any way to pull this service together. On behalf of the Black Marsh Road Cemetery Committee, we do want to extend our gratitude. I pray that wherever you are watching from today, that you are doing well and staying safe. Let me conclude by sharing in prayer. Lord, I want to thank you today for the opportunity that is ours to gather in this way. Though we are experiencing many changes in the way we do things in these days, we are thankful that your love for us remains the same. We have joined together today to remember our loved ones that have gone on to be with you. And now as we conclude this service, we simply ask that you continue to surround those who mourn with your presence, your grace, and your love. Today, may we all seek and find that peace that surpasses all understanding, which is rooted in you and your love for your children. 
Lord, I ask you to bless all those who mourn and need comfort today. In Jesus' name, amen.